In this tutorial, I want to talk about different methods for combining arrays. Believe it or not, there is more than one way to combine arrays into a single array. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. I just released a brand new course on both Skillshare and Udemy titled Mastering JavaScript Arrays. And I wanted to feature a few of the many methods and techniques we talk about in that course. And that is different methods for combining arrays. That's what we'll look at here. Now, arrays are such an important data structure to understand and to be fluent in working with. I included discount links to this brand new course with the other links in the description section. So first, let's take a look at how we can combine some arrays. We have here three arrays, scores, scores one, scores two, and scores three. Now, the traditional method that is used to combine arrays, the method that most people are aware of is using concat. And that basically works like this. If I set up a new array and declare it, I can then set that equal to one of these arrays dot concat. So it's a method of the array prototype. So I can do scores one dot concat. And then inside of parentheses, that's where I include the array or arrays that I want to put together with this one. So for example, I can do scores two and simply put those two together. Now the order matters. The values and scores one will come first in this new array, and then the values and scores two will be next. And if I added another array, those values would come last. So really we should see 65 as the last value, 70 is second last, and so on. Because it is important the order in which you place those. So that's the traditional method of combining. Let's just take a look at that really quick. You know, open the console here. And let's just go ahead and look at new array. Now, as we can see, those are all combined. All the values from all three arrays are together. So they're in a single array. It's not an array of arrays. 70 and 65 are the last two values, just like we mentioned could happen. Now, sometimes the idea of using an array to access the method and then including different arrays inside that parentheses, sometimes the, that idea is a little bit quirky. So if this makes more sense to you, you can also combine arrays this way. So let me go ahead and do new array again. But this time I'm going to set it equal to an empty array. And then I'm going to use the concat method and scores one, scores two, scores three, like that. So this will basically accomplish the same thing. Our new array will have the same values. Let's go ahead and refresh that and take a look at that. And as we can see, it is the same thing. But that can sometimes make more sense in some people's minds where we have an empty array and then we're concatenating these three arrays together into this empty array. And then we reference it with that variable. So that is the traditional method, concat. Now let's look at a method that was made available with ES6. So let me do new array again. And when we create an array and then place arrays inside it like this, what is that going to produce? Well, as you've probably guessed, that will create a multi-dimensional array. So let's just look at that really quick. So new array now is an array of arrays. So there are three elements in new array, and each one of those elements is another array. And we can see the values in those arrays here as we open that up. So that is a multidimensional array. 
and that's what's created. But if we do the same thing and we use the spread operator, which is three dots, and by the way, I will link to a tutorial on the spread operator if this is new to you. But basically what the spread operator does is it takes those arrays and it spreads out the values. So instead of adding an array to this array we've created, what it does is it spreads out each of those individual values and it adds those individual values to the array. And then it adds all the individual values of scores two to the array and scores three. And it does it in the order in which we put these. Now this is the method I prefer for combining arrays. I think it makes the most sense to me and that's probably why I prefer it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now that we've added the spread operator before each of those arrays. We will no longer have a multi-dimensional array. We'll basically have the same thing that we got with concat, as you can see. Now, one more thing that I want to touch on before we're finished here. I'm going to comment out this one. You're most likely aware of the push method. That's how we add elements to an array. So if I were to declare new array here and set that equal to an empty array, and then on the next line, I added elements to that array using push. Let's say we do a 55, 65, 75, something like that. I would end up with an array of three elements. There's nothing really new about that, but let's just look at it really quick. There we go, three elements. Now, what would happen if I were to push an array? Let's just take a look at that for a minute. And say I push scores one. Let's just push that on and see what that see what happens here. Take a look at that. Now we have three elements, well, I'm sorry, four elements. It just happens to be that one of those elements is another array. So we have an array inside of this array. So that's what happened when we pushed the scores one array onto this array. Well, we just talked about the spread operator. So take a look at this. If we do push with a spread operator and spread these values out, it's going to add multiple values. It'll be just like this statement except it will be adding all of these values to that array. So let's go ahead and save that and check that out. And sure enough, those values are in there. It is no longer added as an array. The values of that array are added instead. Now we could do a comma, add another array there. And that would work as well. That would work as well if I remember to put the spread operator in there. Like that. There we go. So that is another method of concatenating arrays or putting arrays together, combining them. Not necessarily a method I prefer. This is my favorite method here, using the spread operator in this fashion. But you can see what you could do with push. Maybe you were pushing values on and you also had an array of values you need to put onto an array also. Then it could be valuable in that setting. So there are a few methods for combining arrays. Before we're done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses, including this new course on mastering arrays in the description section. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. For example, you can get access to the code files I use at the member level. You can follow a link in the description to learn more about that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face, also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.